I prepare myself to teach something, it forces me to pay a little bit more attention to whatever the subject is. Um, and so, um, you know, if I'm going to be preparing a workshop on, you know, how to draw gray fox, now I'm really looking at gray fox and I'm thinking like, okay, where is it dark? Where is it like, what are the patterns? What is variation? Because, and, you know, I'd be interested in doing that if I was drawing a picture of a gray fox, but if I'm going to be teaching it, it kind of raises the level of like, boy, you'd better wrap your head around this because, um, because you want to be able to have something to say. And very often when I'm preparing for those classes, I will make discoveries. I'll notice things about the structure of gray fox that I had not done. And I find this is, this is true for, for just about anything that, that I'm doing. Um, if I prepare myself to teach it, or if I teach a class on it, my understanding of that is gets really better. So it's not just drawing things. Um, for a while, I was teaching Brazilian jiu-jitsu classes, and in those, I would prepare for that class, and, and I would teach it. My, my instructor was a way I was kind of on point for being the, the teaching guy. And on those days, I found I learned so much more about strategy and the technique because I was preparing myself to teach it. Um, and there's, there's some interesting um, research that is looking at, uh, there's kind of a, a pyramid and I, I don't have a copy of it in, in front of me, but basically if you are told something, you know, how little of it you remember and you know, you, your retention goes up if you're also able to see the demonstration your intention, your uh, uh, retention goes up if you are, are are doing it alongside. So you're actively doing the same thing, and so the more you kind of get involved in learning something, um, not just you know listening to it. So that's why, for instance, while you're watching these workshops, if you are kind of taking your own notes, you're kind of working along, kind of making your diagrams and stuff. Like you may even be sketch noting this part of the thing right now. We're like, oh, if I teach, my understanding is more. So um, the, 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 the cool thing about this whole pyramid is that to get the most um, sort of pyramid turned upside down, because if you want to learn more, if you go and you prepare yourself to teach something or you actually teach something, you will learn that much, much better. And you also may discover that you can teach things. And the more you work at teaching things, the better you get at teaching things. So I want to encourage all of you folks out there to um, start thinking like, could I sort of actually step into that role of being a teacher and, and a facilitator? Um, and what would that look like? And so how might you start doing that? Well, I got something really special over the holidays that I wanted to share with all of you. So check this out. This is a step-by-step -step guide to drawing golden pheasants. And it arrived in the mail yesterday. And it's by our friend Ray Bonto. And what this is, is he broke out a little tutorial on how do you go about drawing a golden pheasant. And so instead of just doing the process, what he's got here is He's walking you through his thinking, and he is showing and telling about the things that he finds like are, are that are critical to do in each of these steps. And this is an incredible exercise. Um, so uh, educators talk about the idea of metacognition. Metacognition is when you are thinking about your thinking process, really thinking about what you are doing. And in order to do this, Ray Bonto had to really break down, okay, yeah, I'm making my blue pencil diagram, but what am I really doing when I'm doing that? Because I want to be able to describe that. And then what is the next step? And you notice in this step here, he says, like, while you are kind of filling this out with the, with the pen, he wanted to show a little bit more about the thinking 
behind this step. So there's a little kind of addendum to this. He says, so while you are kind of pinning this in, you're thinking about the shapes and the edges. So he then has a little diagram sort of showing those forms and the kind of the contours and the edges of those. Then he's sort of showing, okay, what do you do then? And you notice that in order to do this, so when I do my step-by-step -step tutorials, um, it's easier for me to do that um, because what I'll do is I will draw something and then I will scan it and then continue drawing on the same drawing. So I don't have to draw the same drawing twice and that makes it easier for me to kind of build up my step-by-step my -step tutorials. But what Ray Bonto has done here is he's actually gone through all those steps again and all those steps again and all those steps again to be able to give you this kind of original um, document. So there's so much work that has gone into this. So here he's then showing how you, how you then start to build up color. And he's putting in the shadows with black grape and gray lavender pencils. So the, the gray lavender into the yellow part of the crown, he's showing that that's where he's using the gray lavender and the black grape, see the label kind of pointing up into this place instead of the shadows on the belly. And then he is putting those um, the local colors on top of those shadows. And you can see all of this building and building and building. That is really exciting. And I am so proud of you, Ray Bonto, for this intention and focus. Um, Avea, did you have anything that you, wanted, you might want to, to, to share here on, on this? Just that being able to go that in depth, it, 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 like you said, it's a way of a stepping stone to teaching to be able to look at your own process. And then also because then it shows you, sometimes you can even learn different ways of doing things as you, as you look. And as a, a person looking, maybe my way is different than Rebantos, but just learning his process is gonna add to my process a lot more too. Um, and so that was, that's just a beautiful gift and a beautiful project, Rebanto. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Ray Bondo, I can't tell you how moved and inspired I am to receive this from you. And I am just, I'm really proud of you. So then what he's also done is taken all of this, taken this process here, and he created this. There's the golden pheasant. You can really see all of those, those strategies and those ideas coming together. That is just so exciting. Um, and <clears throat> that's what sort of made me start to think like, all right, so I learn best when I am preparing to teach something. And what would it be if all of us started preparing little tutorials, little step-by-steps, right? Um, and to show your process, and it could be for, for any subject that grabs you, any subject that grabs you. Um, and, and, and it could be, you know, something about like how I lay out my page. It could be something on how I drew this bird. Or it could be something that isn't about drawing something, but about how I investigated. I was looking at mosses, and this is my process for looking at the moss. And this is how I went about studying it. And so this doesn't have to be something that is um, specifically about drawing a, uh, a picture, um, but any aspect of nature journaling that you connect with, that you can share with other people, if you do that, it will force your brain to look at whatever it is that you are doing in a deeper and richer and more nuanced way. That is, that is huge. That is absolutely huge. Um, and so I want to invite you to do that for two reasons. One is that for your own benefit, by doing that, you are making yourself 
be metacognitive. You're making yourself think about your thinking. You're, you're kind of floating above your process and looking down at your process and noticing what is my process. And first of all, you go like, oh, I actually have a process, right? What am I doing and why am I doing it that way? Sometimes when I do this, I, I realize that, you know, it actually doesn't make sense that I do it in this order. And then what I'll do is I'll sort of change my process because I'm being metacognitive about it. And the second is, if we then share those, um, if you share those, then that's, that's going to help everybody in the community kind of like, welcome to my brain. Let's get inside my brain and see how I'm breaking this down. And other people will look at that. You know how much fun it, it's, I, it's, it's much more fun to look at somebody's sketches than the finished piece. Because you see that the, in the sketches, there's all of our thinking made clear, made revealed by those, those first lines in our exploration. That's so much more fun than, than like looking at Da Vinci's sketches. I could do that for hours. The finished painting of the Mona Lisa is cool, but it is nowhere cool as all the sketches where you get to actually see the mind behind that finished process. Sometimes the, in finishing the painting, you cover up part of the thinking. Right? So um, what if you make your thinking process revealed, to, reveal it to yourself by creating a step-by-step -step tutorial and then share that with everybody else. You can share that by just by posting it on the Nature Journal Club. Wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't you love to start to see everybody else's processes, right? Because guess what? They want to see yours too. As much as you're thinking like, ooh, I think I would like it if everybody else was like, not just like, here's my thing, right? But like, and here's some of my process. That would be, that would really help us all, right? And they want to see yours too. And again, it's, you're, but you're saying like, but that other person, they're better at drawing with pen than I am. Yeah, but in your process, in your thinking, there's going to be some part of what you're doing, you when you make that, when you reveal that, other people are like, oh, you know, I actually hadn't thought of that. We can all learn from everybody else. And again, it's not just, nature journaling is not an art contest. Nature journaling is about being out in nature and observing. So if you're, if you're revealing, what, what for you is what you really want to reveal is less about like how you drew something than your observation process and your experience in doing that. Try to unpack that on your page. So show how you did that. Let's actually start teaching each other. So at this point, I wanted to find out if, um, I know Ray Bonto's online, um, if you feel uh, you would like to, um, let's, I'm gonna jump over to my gallery view and see if I can find you. Oh, there you are. Um, so um, if you, if you uh, would like to, uh, give me a thumbs up if you would like to make a comment to the group. Um, and share some thoughts about what you did. Thumbs up, I see a thumbs up. All right, I'm gonna spotlight you. Um, oops, I think I just unspotlighted you. Um, let's try this again. Um, I got him, I spotlighted You got him, him. oh, excellent. All right, so, um, so we're good, <laughs> here we are. Um, there we go. And uh, so first of all, I just wanted to say again, I am really, really grateful and moved by what you sent me. And it actually kind of just got my all sorts of wheels turning in my head about this project that would be really, really fun for an entire community. I want to let you know that you got that ball rolling. Um, and uh, do you have any uh, thoughts or comments for the, the community? If you want, you can unmute yourself. I think, no, you can't unmute yourself. Um, hold on a second. We'll take care of this. Um, the... All right, you may now unmute yourself. Yeah, so I got so many letters and stuff from you that I felt like I must send something. Uh, <laughs> but I, I thought uh, a letter, so I thought I should send a gift along with it and I couldn't find any art supplies or any books that you might want and uh, I mean I don't have a copy and if I do have good books but if yeah but it'll take time to get another and I don't have that book if I send it uh, uh, so 
uh, so I decided to do the step by step uh, along with it. Um, <laughs> so I was in the middle of it and then I stopped for some while. I mean, I was on the head of the shadow one and then um, and then I stopped and then I decided I must uh, continue and um, uh, you know, uh, and then so uh, you know, if you notice I did it in Faber Castle Polychromos, so you, <laughs> you saw it. That's right. <laughs> Okay. That's it. I saw the fiber fiber castell polychromos, and you also have the black grape and grayed lavender from the that you're 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 mixing with those. I I that's a, my system too. I've got got the black grape and grayed lavender and the polychromos, and then boom, things happen. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sending that. Um, yeah, I I don't need uh, books. I don't need art supplies. I don't need I don't need stuff. Um, but what I need is inspiration and connection. And this, this is this is inspiration and connection. And and that um, this this means so much to me. And um, that you you uh, I'm 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 very grateful. You this was a, an absolute home run. Um, and uh, I know that's an American analogy, but. <laughs> but, but bravo I, I you know i really respect that and i really appreciate it and and it just sort of made me think about this whole project of let's start using creating tutorials as a way of getting us all to kind of be more to notice what we're doing and then to be able to share that at another another level this so thank you thank you jack thank you jack. and just to add um, it was all driven by him i i didn't do anything on on this thing at all. So he brought the cards. He would just run around the house, get the right paper, write the color, right colors. Uh, it was all totally his initiative. I had no inputs whatsoever, other yeah. than post. Yeah, and so what we're looking at there is also just the whole idea of intrinsic motivation. When you are driven to do something, not because somebody else is telling you to do this. Um, that's 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 what we're that's what motivates us and the things that kind of intrinsically motivate us are autonomy mastery and purpose so here he's got full autonomy he's got the range you ray Bonto, you've got you can choose to do this or not ch choose to do this and you chose to do this you're choosing to put your time in on these journal pages there's mastery you're as you work on each one of these things you're getting better and then better and then better and what happens after that oh yeah you get better right so we're developing mastery in this and you've also got purpose you're improving yourself as an observer as a naturalist and as an artist um and that purpose also kind of can drive what we do so those are the three kind of the key ingredients of um of intrinsic motivation and you you exemplify it so again thank you so much i am really grateful thank you we are grateful to you Jack. yeah and the community yes thank you great thank you um so now um here's what we're going to do um avea have you had a chance to check out the chat um for any um are, th are there any uh, topics that will be of, of interest to the group today? Um, so there are a few different folks requesting things on plants. We've got a request of how to draw morning frost on plants, um, how to draw fractals in nature, um, tackling live insects, how to do the spirals of the disc flowers of a sunflower, um, agave textures. There's a whole bunch of different really fun ideas, tips on moss and red foxes. And Heather has an idea of a basic class on how to teach, which ties into it. So oh. we have lots of options today. It's awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's, those are, are really fun. Um, so what um, that, that one on teaching, I think would be kind of an interesting thing to do in one of our nature journal educator forums, instead of having it be an open discussion, um, I every once in a while ought to do a sort of a, a presentation on like what I think are the best practices in how to teach nature journaling. Um, and, um, and so that motivates me. I will do one of those, look for it on the Nature Journal Educators Forum. It won't just be the sort of open format thing. One of the ones coming up will be kind of a formal presentation on how do you teach nature journaling? 
and um, maybe we'll have maybe that will be over a few weeks, and um, so we'll have a course on how to teach nature journaling, which will be free, which will be in the educator forum, and then we'll also have other educator forums where it's for that open discussion format. Um, so that we will do. Um, so there's a number of so we've got the idea of live insects and also of um, uh, um, plants. Oh, it looks like um, Brian Higginbotham is also here. Um, uh, uh, Avea, could you make Brian a also a co-host? I don't think I have that capability, unfortunately. Oh, maybe I just have all the power. Um, hold on a second. Uh, Brian, thank you for being with us. Brian is um, the, there we go. Um, Brian is the, uh, the the leader and coordinator of uh, also, I guess it's Saturday nature journaling workshops, as well as the, um, the Central Valley um, sort of Sacramento area nature journal club. Uh, Brian, it's good to have you with us. Um, um, so for, for day, today's little um, tip and topic, um, let's see. Spirals and dysphorms. All right. Um, yeah, let's let's take a look. Let's 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 kind of break out this this spirals in nature thing because this is this is kind of fun, and I kind of I geeked out with this re recently and, and really had a had a ball. Um, I was looking at my um, my daughter's um, pine cone. And I was playing with the pine cone. The pine, actually, the pine cone's here. And I marked up the pine cone. Mmm, spirals, right? So there is math all over this beauty, right? And what we have to do is learn how to under, see it and understand it in a way that doesn't get us to kind of go like, like ah, oh, ah, uh, and just stress out and be able to just kind of like, oh, that's a beautiful pattern. How can I play with that? Um, when you start sort of seeing the patterns, um, at first it can be intimidating because you're thinking like, oh my gosh, there's structure in that. It's not just like start drawing scales, but there actually is a pattern um, and it can stress you out if you are thinking like, I have to be able to like draw this thing in everything now actually has a place, uh, right? But if you let that kind of stress feeling go and instead kind of approach it from like, oh goody, there is structure here. There is structure here and that's beautiful. I want to geek out and play with that structure a little bit. And if I get a, if it ends up kind of um, informing the drawing, that's great. If not, that's great, but I want to get myself to look more carefully at that structure. And specifically the structures that we're gonna be looking at um, for this are spirals and not just any spirals. We're gonna also check out the golden spiral. All right, this is gonna be fun. So we're, we will, um, so I want everybody to se securely affix your, your geek hats because we are going deep, deep into geek land. Are you ready? Here we go. Um, pocket protectors on. All right. This is a beautiful pine cone. And um, you start looking at it and you say, well, there is, there is, there's a, there's, there, there, at first it's sort of like chaos. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on. But then we start to take a closer look at it and there is real structure going on. Like, look at this, all these ones right here are in a row. And if those ones are in a row, I can see that these ones are in a row here. As a matter of fact, I've marked this row with little orange dots. So take a look at that. All those ones with little orange dots, they are all in a row. Isn't that interesting? So what first just look, feels like um, a big kind of pile of these things, um, a big sort of pile of scales, you're like, go like, oh, those are actually in a row. But check this out, oh snap, because the ones going in the other direction um, here, those are also in a row. So look at this, there are two 
overlapping rows. I have rows going this way and I have rows going this way. Ooh, isn't that interesting? Now let's also note that the angle of the rows, what does this have to do with spirals? We'll get there, all right? Um, what is up with the, the angle of the rows? This one, are there at this angle, this one at this angle. Notice that these ones that are going down here, those are not as steeply, if I kind of orient this thing sort of straight up and down on the screen. Notice that these ones are going really steeply down. These rows are not as steep. Huh. Isn't that interesting? So there are rows that are going at different angles across the face of this bad boy. Um, so that brings us to there we go. Um, there is uh, there. Um, let's, 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 first I'm going to kind of block out kind of how to sort of visualize and see the rows on this. And then, because um, this is actually, sort of the truth is I was actually just recently kind of geeking out, where is that geeking? Where is that geeking? Geeking, was it over here? No, it was further back this way. No, it's the bed. Maybe it was speaking on brown paper. I thought it was on white paper. I don't know why. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it was on brown paper. Look at that. Um, so here is here's some crazy geeking. Um, and so how do you go about drawing something like this? The first thing you want to do is just notice that there are these rows. Okay. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to block in the basic shape of this just by kind of tracing around this. Yeah, there we go. Um, so I have something that's basically doing this. And Okay, I've got this little row here. All right. And what I'm going to do is I am that there are rows that actually go in a spiral. These things, these rows spiral all the way around this cone. So these things are in spirals. And if I, um, I'm going to put in some indicators of the angles of these spirals. So this row here, those ones are kind of coming down at an angle like that, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to block in just a few more rows of those. So you see what I've done is I've just made a set of parallel lines going at that angle across my cone. But wait, this isn't a flower. It's not a spiral, but oh, don't worry. We're still gonna get there. Um, so now we've got this other row that's kind of coming like this. And I am going to add a lower angle. And as I get towards the bottom here, they'll get a little bit closer together. So I made a little grid. And if I want to make this just a little bit more accurately, instead of instead of the line just going across it like this, I am going to just slightly 
turn this and make a little bit of an S. So across the middle, it'll do this. And then I'm going to just slightly turn these angles in like this. So this uh, at the edges here, they're going to kind of wrap around that form. So if I'm looking at this, you know, this kind of comes across here. And at the edge here, it actually tucks down this way more. Notice that I'm coming straight across here. And instead of going off this way, I'm going like, whoa, down here. Coming straight across here, going whoa, down here. So ones coming up across this way are going whoa, at the edge. They're kind of dropping down. And on the top. Now, I've roughly got, um, I've got a framework here that I can now start to play with these, these things. And what I like to do on the scales of these, um, I'll just do one row of scales here, is I want to think about, I'm going to call this the central axis of the scale. Here's the central axis of the scale. And that central axis here is pointing towards you. And here it's pointing off that way. And here it's pointing off this way. And here it's pointing all the way over here. So you see that facing towards you, three quarter view more towards the profile. Facing towards you, three quarter view, three quarter view profile. So out here you've got the profile of this hook. And coming across somewhere in the middle, you, it faces towards you. So um, I think it's easiest to start with a scale that is pointing towards you. And what I'm going to do is in this space here, kind of go out and it comes down. And it has a little central axis that comes up like this. So then when I jump over this direction, the central axis is now kind of tilted over here. And that central bump is facing a little bit, not straight towards me, but it's more out this way. And then the next one over here, the central axis, it's almost pure profile. Almost. And then on the side out here, there's the profile. And then the central axis of this one here will be kind of turning this way. So this one is looking out this direction. Oh, what's over there? OK, let's go check that out. All right, and so its central bump is up here. And then it's right next to this one that is like, oh, this is my best side. And it's got a little bend down there. Isn't that cool? So there's a whole kind of row. Now, if we wanted to kind of spend a lot of time here. You can do that for everybody on that cone. Um, but let's kind of keep ourselves sort of floating around at a slightly higher level here. Um, let's take a look at just, let's you know, sort of find some interesting spirals in this. Um, there was a mathematician named Fibonacci. And Fibonacci was solving a mathematical problem that somebody had given them about, well, I figured it was either rabbits breeding or mice breeding. And you know, you have this many rabbits. So basically, you know, imagine that you had um, one bunny 
Well, if you just have one bunny, you can't do anything with it. So you actually have to start with two bunnies. So here's bunny one and bunny two. So one, one. So those, um, if they were to mate, you only have one baby per litter. So maybe those aren't bunnies because that's not what happens. Would you lower your page a little, please? Oh, sure. Thank you. All right. So he came up with this mathematical sequence that one, one, you just take these two and you add them together and you get two. Then you take the one and the two, you add those together and you get three. You take those two, you add them together. This is the, so three and the five, right? See what's happening here? Eight, 13, dot, dot, dot. Um, so this is the Fibonacci sequence. Right? And um, so he had no idea, but this actually shows up all over the place in nature. Um, so for instance, um, if I am looking at the number of diagonal rows here that are going in this direction, in this trajectory, um, and I start counting those, I'm gonna start counting like, let's say right here at this, call this row number one. I'm gonna count here, so count with me. There's row number one. Here's row number two. Here's row number three. And that's next to row number four. That's next to row number five. They're getting smaller. That's next to row number six. That's next to row number seven. And that's next to row number eight. And that's next to row number nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, and we're back to where we started. Wasn't that interesting? It's a number that just happens to be right there on the Fibonacci sequence. So when I counted the number of rows this way, I went all the way around the cone, I got to 13. Well, turns out if I start counting these ones here, at this one going the other direction, one, two, Three, four, here's five, here's six, here's seven, here's row number eight. And what do you know? We're back to where we were. Look at that, two adjacent numbers on the Fibonacci sequence. Fibonacci's numbers show up all over the crazy place in natural objects. And another fun thing is that um, botanists haven't been able to figure out why yet. Um, so there's something kind of going on here with this. And it's a it's a fun mystery. It's kind of, there's so much that we don't know and have yet to figure out. Um, and this is just one of those beautiful kind of in your face, delightful things. Um, just really, really fun. So let's actually geek out with this a little bit more um, because what I'm gonna do is, how does this have to do with a spiral? Well, I'm gonna make a box. Everybody just make a little box on your page and put a number one in it. That's one. So if I start with one, one, so let's put two ones together. Right. So here's box number, this box, we're gonna call this box with a side of one, a box with a side of one. Now, um, look at the side of that shared space, that's two. So what I'm going to do is then put another box down below that with a side of two adjacent to those first two boxes. And look at this side here now. One plus two is three. I'm going to build, I'm going to construct another box out here with a side of three. Oh, no, you didn't. Look at this next side here. Three plus one plus one. Oh, five. Isn't that cool? So let's construct another box here. We'll put that adjacent to the other one. Here is a box with a side of five. Oh, snap. I wonder if we're gonna continue with this with the Fibonacci sequence. What if we took the five plus the one plus the two? 
oh, hey, look at that, it's eight. Wow, hey, isn't that crazy? So let's just draw another box here. Now a box with a side of eight. Isn't this fun? This is my eight box. So I'm putting my eight box right here, but this is gonna get even crazier in just a moment. Let's just do one more here. Anybody wanna take a guess about how much um, you're going to get? You can take the eight plus the two plus the three. Oh, oh, that's just too good. And you see, we could just continue on, but we ran out of paper, right? Now, here's, here's the fun thing. Look at this. Let's go back to that one box in the middle there, okay? And what I want you to do is just make a little curve. And we're gonna come up here from, uh, we're gonna start here between those two ones. And we're gonna go from the corner of the one box to the corner of the other one box, a little curved line here. And look at this. Now, I'm gonna continue that from the corner of the two box into the corner of the two box. I'm gonna use magenta. Why? Because I can. All right? Now let's continue that from the corner of the three box to the other corner of the three box. Oh, you see what's happening here? Now let's go from the corner of the three box to the corner of the five box. Look at that spiral. Oh. This spiral, this beautiful thing. This and all the shape shows up all over the place in nature. We're saying this in, in snail shells. If you want to look at the shape of the chambered nautilus, it's this wonderfully mathematically advancing spiral and it's keeping the same <clears throat> proportions as it goes down and down and down and down and down and down oh man isn't nature crazy isn't math beautiful math is just another language we're describing the beauty of the world and it is as beautiful as the world that it describes. Now, when we are looking into the face of a sunflower, what you're going to find is that from the center there, there are, uh, or this could just be the little daisy. Go and you take a look at the center of the daisy. And what you're going to see is that there are these spirals that are coming out and not at exactly this angle, but these so now putting in more spirals and putting some spirals in between my spirals because they want more spirals. But there will be spirals 
in the middles of the, where those, um, where all those flower buds are sitting. And just like the pine cone, there are going to be two sets of spirals. And I'm just going to complete this first set so we sort of And so if the first set of spirals is arching out this way, the second set of spirals is arching in the opposite direction. So that means that from here, if one line is coming this way, I'm also going to have lines that are coming out and arching this way. Now, if you like your Zentangle doodles, this is an awesome just mathematical doodle to give yourself. And you can just sit there and bliss out, drawing in. Your little spirals. And these are not mathematically perfect, but you get the idea here, right? So what do you do with this? When you start looking at the um, flower buds that are arranged inside the bowl of this thing, what you get is towards the center, little ones. And those little ones, as they come out here, get larger until they, the buds open and burst. And so you've got them open, so less developed, more developed flowers on the inside of the spiral. And so what I'm getting then are these sets of flowers that are coming out in spiral rows. Um, I'm just going to uh, go onto the web for a second and find, I'm going to do a, um, a search for sunflower spiral. I'm going to do a Google image search and share my screen here, and you'll see what comes up. Oh, man. Isn't that crazy? Look at this stuff. Whoa, what's happening? I didn't want to go to your website. I just wanted to look at your flower. So let's come back here. Let's try this. Um, view image. But we're not seeing anything. OK, let's not look through that. <laughs> so isn't that cool? Um, you can see you can see these, these spiral patterns. And what you are getting, all right, here is so if you follow one of these rows towards the center, the buds are getting 
increasingly less developed. And at the very center of this, the pattern kind of breaks down because they cannot go infinitely small, right? There's a certain size where you, you know, you're not going to be able to make a bud. But you follow that row out, the buds get further along. Then this is an open flower. This is a further open flower. This is a past flower. And this is a flower that is kind of wilted and starting to go to seed. So this outer side of the row, these are all the ones that are open, the ones on the end. You can't really, because the, the petal edges get so close together on these ones out here, you can't really see the edges of those as clearly. But when you get into that center part in the center, um, you know, there is all of this crazy math. So um, when I am And so this is true for sunflowers. It is also true for any plant in the aster family. Um, now, when I am sketching these, if what my goal is, is to really kind of geek out on this kind of wonder, I can get in here and I can plot the spirals. I would probably want to count how many spiral rows I'm seeing going on out here, right? And if I can't include that number in my picture, then I can write, you know, there were X number of spiral note rows. I wonder if that number is a number on the Fibonacci sequence. Huh, interesting. Um, it would get me up into a higher number. And if that was what I found, I would just, I would be doing a little geek happy dance. Um, the, if I, but let's just do a, um, a search here. I'm going to go a search for Daisy and an image. Daisy. There is a picture of a Daisy. Um, now, notice on this little picture of the Daisy here um, that, huh, am I seeing? Am I seeing all those rows? No, oh, please go away. I don't know. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, I don't want to sign up. Please. Just, where, where did my flower go? Ah. Oh, there it went. Oh, no, come back. Thank you. There we go. So if my goal is to draw this thing as I see it, what I'm probably doing is I am drawing the shape of this. I can see the shape of the buds versus the open flowers. And I would be getting that shape in. And notice this one over here, that, that blooming circle is much further back. This one, it's closer to the center, right? That's cool. But that's the level of detail that I'm seeing from this, this, this distance. If I get in here and draw in a whole bunch of spirals, I will not get something that looks at all like that flower, right? So um, when I am doing something and I have a large thing, a cone, or I, or I want to play with all those spirals and those spiral patterns because I'm doing a close up and I want to geek out with those patterns, I would, that's what I would show in my journal. Um, let me see, how do I go back to Zoom? No. Hit escape. Well, I'm now having a hard time um, getting my uh, Avea. My, are you guys seeing the share screen currently? Yes, we're seeing uh, the the internet. Oh, there. Now we see just just you. Oh, okay, good. I'm back. <laughs> Thank you. I think that was that was, that was Brian uh, behind the scenes, maybe um, saying like you can escape from that now. Um, so, um, so check this out. My, my, what are my goals that I want to think? Do I want to show what that general pattern is? Then I can do something that's kind of diagrammatic like this. Um, if I am um, recording something, I could, I could, you know, draw like here's the center of my 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 flower. I could draw a little box around part of it and blow that box up.
And if uh, I wanted to, I could I could show. that there are all of these rows of things and that these ones are open flowers. I could even, here's another open flower, there's another open flower. You know, I could do a little close up of what is going on in that, that part of that structure. If I am drawing a portrait of the flower, then if I get in there and in the inside of the flower, I start kind of going, I've got all these spiral rows that are coming this way and these other ones coming this way and I'm gonna draw the little parts in between. I'm gonna get this big dark glob of gunk in the middle of my flower and I will not be happy and it won't look like that and it won't help me kind of think about it. So what I might do is on that in internal part of the flower there, I can say, um, Let's say here is my I can suggest that there is here is my little head of the flower. And I can just put in a few little things in here saying like look, there's little kind of flower buds. And then in coloring that, I can show that it is greener on the inner inside here and yellower on the outside. And if I want to, I might, you can get, yeah, you probably wouldn't want to, you know, include a hint of all those spirals in there because it's just too small for you to see at that scale. But doing a little inset here where you geek out on the structure and you go like, oh my goodness, each one of those is a little, you know how many petals a sunflower has on each flower? Like there are five on each one of these, right? If I want to kind of get into kind of, you know, just playing with that, I mean, that makes for an interesting little inset when I get in there with my hand lens. And notice how just doing that for part of this little structure here, we're just showing like what this little piece right here looks like. That is so much easier than trying to do one giant spiral where everything comes together. So I can, I can bite off those little parts that I think are really cool and really interesting. Um, but when I choose to, to put in a, uh, when I choose to put in all that other information, or explore the pattern, I kind of know that I've got these two, these two directions of spiraling things that kind of interlock and, and play with each other. Let's just to kind of bring this little daisy home here. Let's just sort of think about what the rest of the petals are doing. I'm gonna have these ones be, you know how some daisies, they all kind of, the petals drop back. So I'm gonna imagine just a bit, I'm gonna sit this on top of a little cone here. And instead of the daisies, this one's coming up. I'm going to have these ones coming down. Um, again, the, the, petal, the petals could be coming up in a cone like this, but I'm going to draw these ones coming down. So the petals that are on the side that are closest to me here are coming down like this. And you know, each one of these petals on the outside edge, botanically, those are actually flowers. Each one of the bumps on the inside here, those are separate flowers. Isn't that crazy? And so if you give somebody a single daisy, you're giving them hundreds of flowers. Look, there's in one flower, it's this bouquet of flowers because each one of those bumps is a separate flower. Each one of these petals 
These are petaloid ray flowers that are out here. So this is actually one flower that is hanging down here. That's a flower, not a petal. Ah, you get in there, this flower, it's got its own stamen, it's got its own pistils, it attaches to its own seed. Isn't that nuts? Same with each one of those bumps on the inside. So here are these little petals that are sticking down and they're gonna get, I'm gonna draw them a little bit skinnier. Maybe this one kind of gets, maybe I'm gonna tuck this one in underneath that one. These ones are kind of going off the edge here. And I've got another one that's coming here. You can see the back side of that other one sticking out down there. This one is going to come sticking out down there. Now, all of these, you want to imagine them kind of pointing towards the inside, the middle of this flower here. That's going to kind of hang down. So that's, that is just a little bit of eking out with a spiral, the math. Um, and what, what uh, you might find yourself doing as you, uh, as you explore these sorts of things, like when I started doing this, I started off with just this pine cone and then I just sort of went Fibonacci crazy. And I looked up online sort of other kind of mathematical arrangements where I could sort of see the Fibonacci patterns and then was drawing those in sort of looking at websites and kind of going like, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. And then coming up, uh, like this, you know, look at here. Here's my I notices, um, I wonders. This is my. It reminds me of. Reminded me of these little things. Reminded me of elf hats, of chocolate kisses, whatever your fish scales. So um, you know you can you can combine what you're observing with um, with things that you study. This. Page is just an extension of your brain. What are you learning about? What are you, what are you playing? What are you playing with? And that is just a little bit about the spiral in the flower. Um, I hope that that was fun.